Welcome to Make a Path Presents. I'm Ronnie Hayes, and today let's talk about how to write for a comic book. Now, we got a couple experimental videos. This is essentially a writing video, but we have a, a few experimental videos while I move. I'm going to be uh, done moving and all set up probably at the end of August, so we'll have some downtime. However, this is an experimental video. If you did enjoy it, hit that like button. If there's a, a lot of interest, we'll do a few more of these. If not, we can stop here. Anyway, I've been getting a lot of requests since I've been promoting my own comic, DoomsdayKingdom.com, about how to write a comic. And instead of just continually showing off my comic, which uh, for a number of reasons, it's a, quite a bit different than something that's put in stores and it's brand new and it's building a, a viewer base and a fan base. My comic was lucky because we had the channel and I was able to describe what the long-term story was going to be for the first few volumes. So we're going to look at this comic called The Violent and I am picking ones that aren't wildly popular, not that I, I'm aware of, like B Batman and Sp Superman, stuff like that. Be warned, this is not a superhero comic. This is more up my alley where it, I simply go for good stories that are grounded in realism but might have, you know, one or two things that are completely fake. Like superheroes, zombies, yada, yada, yada. But I like them more grounded and a little more gritty and realistic. So, the cover here tells us parent, father, most likely, baby in a stroller, and then right here would be the interesting... The sweet ass. No, just kidding. He has a gun hidden in his back pocket. So, and this little tidbit here, this little bit with a roof and a telephone pole, that tells me neighborhood. So when I first see this, the violent, and then uh, I see the little telephone pole, it looks like a neighborhood without revealing too much art at all. It's just a fence with a shadow. But it tells me maybe maybe a struggling single parent or a strung, struggling new parent or a struggling parent because he's pushing the kid in a stroller, not in a car. And then, so I do like this setup for something that's subtle and simple. So again, I do like this for an issue number one cover. And that's what caught my eye. Now, opening, opening the comic up, we're hit right away with something that's common in the comic industry that I noticed uh, the big splash page for superhero comics. It might be like some kind of exciting fight or incident. But this just showcases maybe, maybe pulling you into the, the underworld, dark at nighttime, what happens at night, people get in trouble, maybe people rob people or drug dealing, yada, yada, yada. It brings us into that. And sure enough, he's casing out a place to rob. And you can tell with the panel layouts, this doesn't have to reveal too much. And it's real ambiguous. You don't know if he's just chilling, but because it's nighttime, uh, because he's sitting there smoking, and you know it's something, you know, maybe not that good. He's up to no good, maybe. But if you look at the panel layout, it's simple and smooth. Here's the guy we just saw from the back. He's smoking a cigarette. He's waiting. Hood up. He's up to no good. Somebody leaves their house. He puts out a cigarette. Now he's ready. See how simple it is? Guy smoking. The guy leaving the house. He puts out a cigarette, and then this is the guy leaving, and it's bouncing back and forth. So it's ping, ping, pong, 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 you know, I don't know what that sound was. Checks his watch, the guy bounces, and he starts walking forward. Now, I will admit, when I first read this, I was reading kind of quick, and I was a bit confused. Uh, does he know this guy? Is this a stranger? Is he robbing him? Is he hired hitman? Is he, what is he doing? But essentially, he's, gonna, he's casing the joint, and he's going to rob them. His wife pulls up, and again, this was a bit confusing because it's like, um, well, how did she know he was there? How did she find him? Is this around their neighborhood? And this is going to be our lead. And I think the first, the first flaw in this particular story is this. She found him because he's supposed to be watching his daughter. You immediately, in my book, made him a scumbag. He's home alone with his child, a small child. The idea of the story, and you'll see by the end of this issue, is the connection between the father and his daughter. This could have been fixed really simple by having 
the mother with the child or some babysitter and he was simply late because he's casing the joint. Not just straight leaving their child. You know what I'm saying? So this was one of the first moments in the story where I think they, uh, story-wise, it was a, a flaw. So his kid's in the car and they simply go back home. She wants eggs. And the next day they're at work. They're setting up his, his job. A couple pages there. She wanted eggs and milk or whatever. So he goes home from work. He's in the grocery store. And instead of buying it, he just straight steals it. <clears throat> and here's another problem. Again, we hit another flaw because now we're following this main character. And, okay, he steals it. He punches the guy. But this is the part where I, I almost hissed at. I've been poor in my lifetime, as a matter of fact, before my daughter was born. <laughs> we were eating, me and uh, my daughter's mother, my baby mama, were eating at a soup kitchen, real broke, real poor. And because I had a kid coming up, I hustled real hard and I was able to get us an apartment and then move up slowly from there. I don't know anybody who's struggling who would throw away a gallon of milk just because the eggs got broke. So he throws away the milk and all. In, and goes home with nothing. The kid needs milk for morning. Now he looks like a double jackass. He left his kid at home alone, and now he has perfectly fine milk. And instead of just rinsing it off, he just throws it out or cleaning it somehow. Maybe he was worried about, you know, poison, salmonella or whatever. Clean it out. I mean, clean that shit. Anyhow, this was another flaw because I don't know any person who's struggling for money who would throw out a perfectly good container of milk just because eggs broke on it. So again, that rips you out of it for a moment. And I think this would have been more well received if he brought the milk home, but said he broke the eggs and didn't have enough money for more eggs. And that is what the conflict was. Instead of this quick conflict about him forgetting, it's empty conflict. So again, that's the second flaw I think this uh, small story um, tripped itself up on. And now here's a drug dealer meets with his wife and uh, you know she's copping some drugs, some drogas. And then he's home with his kid and here's one of the other fatal flaws. His friend needs a ride, his friend's at the bar. So he goes to pick up his friend. And, and I promise you, we'll circle back around and look at structure here in, uh, shortly. But I want you to understand what's going on in the story. So he's watching his, his kid. She's working for, for the, the bacon. And, uh, you know, she's having a little breakdown. Will she use the drugs? Because the guy gave her a, a tester bag with his phone number. And um, he goes to the bar to pick up his friend. Right here is another fatal, probably one of the most fatal in this first issue, that made me want the lead character beaten half to death because I wanted a new main character. He goes into the bar to get his friend and he sits around drinking with them for a while and then they come out the bar, he throws up and this is how it ends. He's like, oh shit, my kid. The cops grab him up and this is why I was a little frustrated because I like the idea. No superheroes, no monsters. I like the idea or I like stories of real people, uh, gritty, you know what I'm saying? And it's just a car seat. And I get the concept, but the execution, I feel, shoots itself in the foot. What would have been a better way to connect us with the lead instead of being a degenerate hanging out in a bar while his you know, toddler child or little child sits in the car? What would have been better is if he did go, he agreed to go, stops the car, he says, listen, I will be right back, I promise. He goes in and whatever conversation happens, keep some of the conversation, but he tells him, I got my kid in the car, we need to get the hell out of here, but his friend isn't stopping. So the lead character grabs a beer because he wants the lead character to drink with him. In the rewrite, he should grab the beer and chug it all in one, like here's a block, he picks up the beer, another block, he's chugging it, another block, it's almost gone, final block, it's totally gone. Instead of sitting down, never sits down, stays put and just chugs the beer and then drags him out. In that short period of time, we still have that connection with him that he's trying to balance being a, a parent, 
and helping his friend who had a rough day, whatever his problem was. I think he got fired or something. And then it leaves it off in a more a sympathetic light. You always, you already have so many strikes against the lead character. And I'm not sure about who did write this. I remember when I picked this up, I remember it was either the writer or artist or both of them. I read something that they wrote and I liked it. It was written by Ed Bryson. I'm almost positive I read something by Ed Bryson and I really enjoyed it. Now, chances are Ed Bryson um, never was or knew <laughs> you know, people like this. Uh, chances are. I mean, like on a personal level. I, uh, I grew up being and around a lot of people very similar to a lot of these characters in here. And I'll tell you right now, there's a few red flags that these people wouldn't do. You know what I mean? Anyhow, uh, uh, sure, there's degenerates, but if they're your lead, you don't want them being such a degenerate. So let's look at page structure. Actually, let's look at the flow of the whole issue. And then we'll go into a couple page structures and then we'll end out the video and you guys can put any certain specific questions and comments down below. And again, maybe we'll look at other comics. Here's one that has a fabulous cover. This cover won me over instantly. Being a zombie fan, this isn't a zombie comic, but it's zombie-like. It's a zombie with a twist. One of the tragedies with comic book, the comic book industry nowadays is um, sh they put comics out and they don't stay on top of telling the customer what they're doing. I think they're so afraid of customers bailing. They essentially like, I have no idea what happened to cannibal. I tried everything in my power to stay in touch with what was going on. This one, they, because of low sales, they finally ended it after like five issues. And you can tell why, because there's certain areas where if you did a little tweak, you could have really, you know, hyped it up. For issue number one, I think this is, this should have been closer to an issue number two. I think issue number one should have built up something a little more gripping. Uh, you know, anyway, let's look at the whole story. The whole story is essentially showing somebody who is poor or on the poorer side, criminal, has a kid, can't really afford their means. They're both drug addicts, him and his wife. They're both in somewhat of recovery. As you know, with uh, drug addicts, it's a constant state of recovery until your next bag. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's the characters they're dealing with. Home life, work life, and even the coloring. I'm not sure if this was on purpose, but there's even some subtle coloring. I don't know if it was an accident. I think it was. if it was an accident, it was a, a happy coincidence, but... You have the home life, and you, you get these these um, brighter, lively colors. From the color perspective, I think this was a great choice. You have this bright and lively, this happiness, this joy. And then here, it's, it's warm, but it's also dark and dreary. You know, his expression here and yada, 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 uh, being covered in shadows. I mean, there's definitely a vibe to it. Because who's going to like doing this job, a moving, you know, moving man? Anyhow, structuring a page, what would be a good one to pick? Let's just stick with what we got. Here's his work. They're introducing his work. So the top of the page is going to be your establishing shot. Now, it's not like movies or sitcoms where the establishing shot needs to be just a building. Because <laughs> when we think establishing shot... That's what comes to mind. Oh, the outside building of wherever. No, it's moving boxes. We see kitchen, bedroom, dining room. We know someone's moving or moving into somewhere. This panel immediately leads into this moving guys. They're both wearing moving uniforms or in uniforms. They're the way they talk. Right, hold up, we deserve a break. You could clearly tell these are moving men. And then they go into their conversation back and forth whatever it is. But you see what I mean? Establishing shot, and then you set up what they're doing. This is the first sign that they're at work. So you have to set that up. Boom. Simple. Now at the next page, it looks like they are just continuing to set up parts of the story. So we go on to this page where he's done with work. 
Do you have to say he's done with work? Right here, you can't believe everything you read in the papers, man. Come on, we uh, we rush. We should be able to finish up early. Uh, told Debbie, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so it's kind of a hint that they're finishing up. And then we're on to the new page, establishing shot. You don't want to go, you could, if you had the right style, but you don't want to go from this right to shopping. It, it, the flow is a bit broken and jarring. Unless you did it on one page where it's like, I got to go to work and pick up this and you did yada, yada, yada. So here's a, a whole new fresh page, establishing shot. Now we got the building, he's off of work, he's going in, his wife was talking about milk. So now you just, and again, this is dependent on how you set it up. I think the artist and the color did a really good job setting up. He's entering and you get this shady feeling about him. So without words, without knowing what the character is planning on doing, you immediately know something shady. Then he pulls out the list, bags everything up, but he's looking over his shoulder. Again, shady. And then he gets the milk. In this too, you see the milk through the thing. He has his shadow. It's shady. It has that. It keeps that whole vibe. And then when he's pocketing the milk, you get it immediately. You don't need to see any other panels of him looking to see if the coast is clear. He's immediately, because it was perfectly, I think it was well done set up all throughout that it was shady. It wasn't your ordinary, I walk in and buy milk. Now we have, uh, that just continues the, the uh, whatchamacallit. Now, moving on to this, we go right from the trash. These, this story connects. It's not skipping to a different character or a completely new location that doesn't have anything to do with his interaction here. It was his wife who wanted the milk and eggs. It was for his family. So obviously the eggs are broken. So we move immediately to his wife and it. Uh, the little girl on the couch, he comes in, see how it fits. So you don't always have to do an outside uh, building for the establishing shot. It's inside living room and again, it connected. Now for this, they, they chose to do outside building. Boom. Or uh, out, yeah, outside building, boom for work. She's showing up for work. She's a cleaning lady. And then it continues here and leaves off. All same and fluid. Back here to watching his kid because, again, it's already pre-set up. So we go right into it. He's home playing with his daughter, and that's when his buddy calls. So just a little idea of setting up. And this is where I kind of need what you are curious about, any of your questions in particular, to understand uh, you know, what else there is to answer. Because you guys might have questions about something that is even kind of new to me. So maybe I'll look into it and we'll open up some discussions. Because this isn't just me knowing everything and telling you how the world works. This is me um, always daily developing my craft as a writer as well. So I'm telling you what I know, but there's also stuff that I'm learning along the way. So I don't want you to think I know everything. There's always different ways to do things. And uh, you want to make it as smooth as possible. You never want a reader going, wait a minute, wait, what? Wait, wh wh who is, where is he going? <laughs> you know what I mean? So as smooth as possible. They don't always have to know instantly with this image, but it helps. We know he got a phone call from his buddy and he's gonna go. We know we just checked in on her at work because we can see it. We don't need an introduction. And then when we hit this page, we already know because they already prepped it ahead of time. He's going to meet his buddy. And then from here we have the establishing shot, his look of worry, uh, maybe frustration, and then he leans down, talks to his kid. And then he's entering the bar. There's his buddy. That's the main purpose for him being there. You don't have to do these multiple panels where he's walking through the bar and all this shit. No, because each panel is telling a chunk of story. He's entering. There's activity, lively. And he's sitting there and he's bummed out. You don't even need to show his progression from here to here. It's all set up right here. 
and then the first point of interaction, and then the story flows from there. All right, any other thoughts, ideas, suggestions, questions about this theory breaking down uh, you know, comics starting with their issue number one. If we have other comics, like for example, The Walking Dead, there's a issue 135 that I think, I'm sorry, issue number 132, which I think is a fantastic single issue. We may break that down one day, but this is uh, writing a comic and looking at the structure and all that. I'll come up with a good title some other time. If you're interested, we'll take a look at Cannibal, but hit that like button. Leave some comments down below and let me know what you think about a series like this. Not every day, <laughs> you know, once in a while, talking about writing. Because we do have a few videos about writing coming up. So you guys let me know. And don't forget doomsdaykingdom.com. If we're out of stock on the website, fear not. We're restocking every other week. All right, love you guys for the support and I'll see you next time.